Hello, Racing to Green here. We're racing right now to get our raised bed gardens built. And this is the Arduino cloud-based watering system which I built and is fed from a rain barrel water collection system. And is controlled and monitored with soil moisture sensors from the cloud with an Arduino Internet of Things microcontroller kit. This is part one of a three or four part series and this vid will be an overview of the Arduino Internet of Things, the cloud environment, and a quick demo of setting up an Arduino device in the cloud. In follow-up videos, we'll cover the parts list I used, some of the gotchas with some of the carts I chose, and how I fixed them, and then writing the code. After that, I'll cover powering it all with solar, the waterproofing, and some of the considerations to make all of that work. I think this is one of the easiest ways to build a hands-free, reliable, automatic watering system that also allows you to monitor what it's doing, and even manually water the system if the sensors fail. If this is content you like, please hit the video likes and subscribe buttons because content like this is going to keep coming. Thanks. And this is the waterproof box showing 95% moisture content because we just had a couple of days of big rain. And uh, this is the Arduino Cloud app running on my phone. It's set up so that it can be controlled either by using the sensor as it's set here initially. And then you can turn that off as I'm about to do. And then open the rain barrel hose relay and water it manually, which I just did. And now that it's manually switched on, we can see the drip system running. Tomato plant one, and tomato plant two, and there is the sensor. If you aren't familiar with what an Arduino is, it's a programmable microcontroller like the ones on the screen. Arduino is an Italian company that's been manufacturing these programmable microcontrollers and has been doing so for at least 10 years, which is when I first discovered them when I was making robots. The kit that I chose is the Arduino Explore kit, but you could probably build your own kit with the individual controller and shield for a bit less from Amazon, including the shield, microcontroller, and the moisture sensor. There's been a newer version of the IoT carrier release since I started this project, actually. We'll talk more about the hardware later, but let's go to the cloud. Using the Arduino Cloud does require a setup account, which is free for two things, as they call their projects but it doesn't include mainly for me over the air updates. I'll explain more about that in a bit. I'm paying for the maker subscription myself as I want to be able to share dashboards with others as well. This is just some other page talking about how it all works and that you can use code or no code. Um, you really can get by without being a programmer using these. And uh, show some of the, your data that you can put into it. But anyway, let's get started and go to the cloud itself. So we're logged into the Arduino cloud. There are courses and resources available for the various types of Arduinos, and there are a lot of them. The lower left corner shows features I'm using in my particular plan, just one thing so far. There's also a link here for the Arduino cloud status page, which shows if there's any part of the cloud that's currently not working. This would be important if something's going wrong and you, can't, you don't think it's part of your, your problem. You gotta look and check in the cloud and see if maybe the Arduino cloud's down. Now let's log into the IoT cloud where our projects and the dashboards are held. And here's our smart garden project under things, as Arduino calls the things of the Internet of Things. So things is the thing you are controlling or the things that you want to control, or you can call them projects as well. And here's our smart garden dashboard. You can see everything that we also have on the phone. You can see it as it would be desktop, or you can look at what it looks like uh, as a phone on the phone. This is how you do the setup and, and configuration of the dashboards. And then devices is actually where you start. You have to actually add a device, which for me is Smart Garden Controller, which is an Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010, and it's already added as you can see. And let's add another one just to see how it's done. And you can see when you click add, there is a choice here between regular Arduino proprietary devices or third party devices. If you look under the uh, information button there, it shows you what the uh, compatible Arduino devices are. There's a, a list and the types of devices that you can also use uh, for third party devices. But we're gonna click on this one as this is what we want to add. It's going to be my uh, 
uh, RP2040, which is a, a nano. So it's looking for it. I've powered it up and it's ready for it to become available. And we'll see if it discovers it. And there it found it. And we'll configure it. You can name it here. Let's call this one SPC RP2040. This is going to probably be a solar panel controller. And now it's uploading a sketch to it, which is just a basic uh, connection sketch that it's uh, got built into the uh, cloud system. Configuring security for it and adding the firmware. This one may be configured a little differently because the RP2040 actually can run as more or less kind of like a Raspberry Pi. It has that uh, capability. But anyway, and it is done. And now you can see it added. It shows us being offline right now and ready to create a thing. So let's create a thing. This is going to be a basic one and I'll modify it later, but I want to show you the sections of building this. And we'll just call it SPC begin. So let's look at the sketch section where we write our code in the cloud. This is basic uh, thing property sketch that's applied when you create the, a new uh, thing. From here, you modify the code into what you actually want to build. This particular section can be less usable than the full code editor, so let's move into that. And you go up here and just click on full code editor, and it will log in. This is a more uh, recognizable coding IDE or integrated development environment. And one of the reasons Arduino is such a great learning environment if you think you might want to become, become a developer someday. The uh, README A doc here is basically just a, a description of a program uh, like you would have in any code repository like GitHub. The uh, secret tab here is where you enter your secret SSID for basically the name for your Wi Fi network and your password, and then your code can reference it from here. And then the thing properties, this is uh, where the variables are and how they relate to the cloud. You're not supposed to make changes here. This, is a piece of, this piece of code is created from entering the variables in the sketch setup and the cloud thing configuration environment. And with that, I'm going to change back to the smart garden thing to develop uh, or to uh, demonstrate further. So we're going to go back to here. Go into smart garden this time because it's already configured. And now that we're in the smart garden thing, and here is the sketch. See this section in the top? This is actually, this is all what they call commented code. And this is an example of what is actually in the thing property section that we were just in in the other program. You choose your variable types and things like that from here. We're gonna go back into setup and we can look at one. And then we'll dive into and edit one of these. We'll choose moisture because that's the one that's most important to us. And we'll choose edit. And here you name your variable and you choose your inner, your data type, which for us, which your variable data type is going to be, is going to be an integer, which at a very basic level is a whole number and, or a float, which this is not a float. <laughs> I need to change it back. It's supposed to be an integer. 
And uh, the other things that you can choose from are character spring, string, which is uh, uh, alphabetical, I guess, uh, not instead of a numeric, and uh, Boolean, which is kind of a state, like true or false. And you set that here. And then you make a you set your declaration for it, which is this is set once you actually change the properties in here. And uh, the unique name for that can't include spaces and special characters, and it can't start with a number. So these are things to, good things to know. And then you move on to the variable permissions. And the vari variable permissions are: is this going to be something that just reads data and puts it out to you, or is it something that can change with the coding? And this is kind of an example. Read write variable can work as both an input and an output. The data can be sent from the device to the cloud and vice versa. Read only it only works as output, and the data can be sent only from the device to the cloud. And then the variable update policy, this gets used a lot. Um, you want to know how often you want your data and when you want your data that you're sensing in, in our moisture, especially. And uh, Right now it's set for every 60 seconds. It's going to update the cloud and the code will react to changes um, or it will post the data at least every uh, 60 seconds. Uh, on change, if you did it on change, the variable would update it whenever a change in the value is greater than the threshold you might set. Like if we change it right now, the threshold will be 60 seconds or if the variable changed by 60 points, percentage points, um, then it would update to the cloud. Once you've selected all that and you go into the sketch and change all that and you push it to the cloud, verify and upload it, that you're going to be back in this and you can go into your editor and then you will think, see it all here. And this is for the smart garden. And you see our float here for the first four variables because we want decimal for all those battery voltage, humidity, temperature, USB voltage, and then an integer for moisture, because that's going to be a percentage, and we just want the percent. It doesn't have to have a, a, a decimal. And Boolean for the set relay state, that's uh, how the relay is. Is it true? Is it on? Is it false? Is it off? And are we using the sensor? Is it true or is it false? And then these are the sections that get updated when you change the amount of seconds, whether it's um, going to be on change, which these last two are set relay state and use sensor are on change. When those change, then it, it updates the cloud. These other ones, we want to do it every so many seconds and to have that update the cloud. 